I get a call from my father saying that Giselle has been picked up from daycare, which is abnormal because Lisa really gets off work at 4.30. We're calling her, she's not answering. So then there's another red flag. Appearance of the three victim advocates. They come to our house and we already knew what was going on. To have to tell a four-year-old that he, he, there's no more mommy, like a one-year-old who at this point, she's not, she's not gonna remember her mother like that. And we gotta try to keep that memory alive. Crazy, like, to try to, to try to prepare yourself to have a conversation of how do you get a four-year-old to understand death? How do you understand that mommy's gone, mommy's not coming back? On November 27th, 2018, at approximately 1.16 a.m., police would receive a frantic 911 call claiming a woman by the name of Elisa Thompson had mysteriously vanished after failing to pick up her child from school. Witnesses on multiple accounts would state seeing a man get into the driver's seat of Elisa's black Nissan Rogue, then drive away at a high rate of speed. When she failed to return to work, it was then police understood the severity of the situation and began their investigation on locating Elisa. The Tallahassee Police Department Special Victims Unit would release flyers as well as social media posts asking for anyone with information to come forward. Three days later, police would receive two 911 calls claiming to have information on the person responsible for abducting Elisa. Jane Doe would report a man by the name of Reginald Gibson, who she claimed kidnapped Elisa at knife point during her 30-minute break at her job. John Doe would tell police that Gibson was indeed responsible for Elisa's disappearance and could be located at Televilla Apartments. The caller also stated that Gibson was most likely carrying a knife and was suicidal. Police would arrive at 2810 Shearer Road, a parking lot in front of a movie theater, where Elisa's abandoned vehicle was soon discovered. Elisa was found deceased in the back of her vehicle with multiple stab wounds caused by a sharp-bladed instrument. On the ground next to her car was a knife with a bent blade. Her cause of death was a result of multiple fatal stab wounds. 31-year-old Reginald Gibson was the prime person of interest as investigators began gathering evidence to build their case. After searching Reginald's apartment, they would find fresh blood on his pillow, bed, mattress, and walls. He was picked up immediately and questioned by two senior investigators. See, we got what you prefer. I know we got pretzels, we got goldfish, we might have some crackers. Which of that do you prefer? Okay, okay. The budget cuts and that's cut the heat off. Or cut the heat on, I guess. Yeah, well, I don't know, good lord. Let me go get him some crackers. Yeah. You got them? Yep, lay it on. Right. I'm gonna go get you a bigger one. You finish that one. You doing all right? He gave me some crackers? Any type of that. I'll be back at you. I'm Jason Duke House, by the way. There you go. You got your one of each. Yep, I sure can. If it isn't already apparent, Reginald is quite selective in who he decides to conversate with. His standoff behavior potentially creates a barrier for extracting any information. So, detectives take a more cautious approach and use their time wisely in building rapport development. Hey, how you doing? My name is Nick Rogers. This is Jason Newhouse. I think you're in that town. How you doing? Do they not bring you any water? Where's it at? You want some more? No. 
you want water, Coke, or something now. Uh, you don't have your ID in your pocket, do you? You do? What, what's your first name? It's, it is Reginald, though. Right. Where, uh, where are you staying? On the street. How long have you been staying out on the street? For a minute. Um, uh, you, you got family here in town? No. No? I'm from Georgia. Or about some Georgia? Bainbridge. Is your mom and them still in Bainbridge? No. How long have you been in Tallahassee? About five years. Okay. Are you working anywhere? I was working at Waterbury and Crystal Cream. That, that's that's what I heard. Um, when did you stop working there? I know you didn't get fired. So why'd you stop working there? My feelings. <sighs> Your feelings? Yeah, I made the wrong bitch. That happens. Yeah, I'm sure. Did you have kids with the one you're talking about? Yeah. How many kids you got? One. Boy or girl? Boy. Boy, how old? Three. Mm -hmm. I've got a one-year-old, a five-year-old, an eight-year-old. Three's a good age. You ain't got but one, the one baby? With her? Yeah, no, but all, all together. No, I got three. Three. Lord. Boys and girls, or just... How old's your girl? Seven. That's the one that gets you. She's a princess, I'm sure. How often do you get to see your kids? Having problems with having problems with these girls letting you see them. How long has it been since you've seen your girl? I just seen her about three weeks ago. Oh God, she in Georgia then? That's a long time now. Yeah, that's too long. <coughs> I can't imagine going a day without seeing my little girl. My boys too, man, my girl. <laughs> yeah. I just feel, you know, I feel very protective of her. Before you saw her three weeks ago, how long how long ago was it before you uh, saw her? Probably about two weeks. You going too long? Is it they just don't want you to see them, or it's just hard to get up there? They just don't want me to see them. As detectives Bill rapport, they briefly empathize with Reginald while they discuss the topic of seeing their kids. This topic is a great way to lead into a more confrontational moment as the suspect's guard will naturally be lowered whilst talking about a loved one. What you been going through, man? You say you had problems with your baby mama here you been, and living on the street. Something been getting you. What been going on? That's what I've been going through. You been getting high? Or you just been fussing with women? I don't smoke and drink. At all? At all. Not even when things are hard? That's good. You been depressed though? I mean, how, how old are you? How old are you, Reginald? 31. To be 31 and, you know, being out on the street, that's got to be hell on you. Is there somebody that you've been able to talk to, either a friend or pastor? Family or anything like that about what you went through? No. You got no church? You know old uncle or <coughs> nobody? You been keeping it all in? That ain't good for you, man. Yeah. It's hard to hold stuff like that in. You know, especially when it involves your kids and things like that. What last place you lived at here? Is that your cousin that lives there or your uncle? My cousin. Yeah. You could talk to him about me and all this? Why is it like that? Are y'all just not close, sir? I'm close. I just ain't no living out. Yeah. 
it'll drive you it'll drive you wacky, man. Trying to keep all that in. It's good to talk about things for the reachable one point. You know? But all out. Sometimes other people can look at the same situations you're going through because they're not involved in it. They're a step away, so to speak. They can look at it from a different perspective. I know that when I was going through some things, you know, with, with my wife, um, you know, everything just seemed horrible and like the end of the world. Um, but I sat down and talked with somebody who was not in my situation, obviously. So he was able to look at it from the outside and kind of give me some guidance and tell me, you know, what I needed to do. Um, a lot of the changes I had to make were, were basically with me. Um, but without being able to speak with somebody, I probably wouldn't have made it through. You hold on that shit. You gotta learn to open up. It's hard to open up. You gotta learn how to do it, though, for real. You hold it in and make you do things outside yourself, say things outside your normal self. You know what I mean? And that's what I was doing. You know, I wasn't acting like a normal self, so I was holding it all in. So, and it just drives a wedge in like every relationship, not just between you and, and these women, but it'll drive a wedge between you and your kids, you and your friends. You know, to a degree, I mean, it might even drove a wedge between you and your cousin that you live with just because you were holding all in and being closed off and not want to talk about it, you know. <coughs> I mean, I'm sure he sensed something was wrong. Maybe he just didn't know how to ask how he could help or what he could do. You know, especially if you've always been that strong, silent type to begin with. People tend not to get in your business, you know. Because they feel like you can handle it. And the truth is, sometimes we can't handle it. Even as, even as men, we can't handle it. We like to think we can. But sometimes the worst one. Yeah. You know. And that's what makes it so bad is because we keep telling ourselves that we can handle it. We can handle it. We can handle it. I can get through this. It, it just keeps getting worse and worse and snowballing. And so there's no way we can get ourselves out of that situation. No way. And that's when things get bad. So. This slow and methodical process, plus detective's confident demeanor, causes Reginald to exert telling like kinesics. His prolonged posture and the constant attempt to hide his face is most likely Reginald's subconscious pondering a traumatic moment. This gesture is Reginald's way of detaching altogether and hiding his true emotions. Detectives continue to question Reginald and build further rapport even after 40 minutes into the interrogation. Are you seeing anybody else since then? Can't even bring yourself to do it, can you? I don't know. You ain't had nothing on the side yourself the whole time? So you was being true to this? Committed to her. Like Miss Dawkins, you was being true to her? That's what you want. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah? That shit there could be. Kira. Kira, my big woman, sort of. Right. You was good to her, too, then? Somewhat. The best you could? Well, you don't, you don't drink, you don't smoke. <coughs> You've been true to two women that are giving you the hardest time over these kids. There's one that you've been willing to take back even if she's stepping out on you because you love her and you got a kid with her. You ain't lazy, you work two jobs. I'm assuming when you say you work two jobs, that's two different shifts. That you might be working at night, you might be working at day on the same day. So you're basically working around the clock, trying to make ends meet, trying to provide for your kids. Is that a pretty accurate picture? I mean, that's what I know. That's what you told me, and that's what I already knew. I didn't know about you not smoking and drinking. You told me that. And about not stepping out on, on these women. But I believe you when you say it. Because you ain't got a reason to lie to me about it. Is that you? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know if that's you... 
that you must have had a tremendous amount of pressure on you. Tremendous amount of pressure for us to be here in this room. Even a strong, strong man can lose it. See it happen all the time. And that don't make you a bad guy. That don't make you a villain. You just broke. Happens to all of us. Just means you broke. Sometimes the world will break you, Reg. But we also know there's extenuating circumstances. And I'm finding it hard to believe after talking to you that what's done was just done in cold blood. You know, I know that something might have happened. And that things might have got out of hand. And that something might have happened that you didn't mean for it to happen. But we've been working on this all day. And we've talked to, talked to some people. We've gathered some evidence. And that's why we're sitting here in this room with you. It's because we want to talk with you. Not necessarily because we need to. Because we don't. But I felt like we owed it to everybody involved. Families and even you. Just to offer that. To see if you wanted to talk to us. I mean, if there's anything that you can explain, if there's anything that might bring peace to you, peace to a family, then I think you ought to do it. But that's up to you. So who do you want to be? to it and carries it, you're that guy that tries to make it right. Can't make it right. Can't make it right. You can't change what happened, Reginald. But sometimes, like they teach us our whole life, sometimes saying you're sorry and saying why. My thing is, I was about this room. So I'm quite sure y'all know my charges and stuff by now. You were doing that to support her? Right. The day, I got, the day I got arrested, the money went for me. I went and did that for her to put extra money in her pocket. Brother, I worked work that's a job. Right. No. You're making money, that's all you're doing. You're trying to support people. I get that. And she didn't care about none of that. I just got to do this time and get out. I tell my whole life. She don't like that. Because now I don't want to go to the club. I don't smoke while I'm drinking. And she liked that money that you were bringing in before, didn't she? No, she got she This time she was up. Mm -hmm. So she had a good job. It ain't about the money, it's about the fame. Yeah. When you go to the club, she go to the club every weekend. Yeah. So she like to be seen with the niggas in the booth. You know what I'm saying? And I was that I was that nigga one time. You know what I'm saying? So when I get out and decide to change my life, and I do that no more. 
she fucking out with the next nigga doing it. <coughs> and I called her. I pulled up at the nigga house and she coming out the house. And that's when things went the wrong way. Yeah. And that was she showed me that she really didn't go fuck about me. That care. No, that's terrible. Yeah. When that happened? I got out in March. July. What you were doing was right. I'm sorry that she didn't support you. She should have. She should have been proud of you. Yeah, but I ain't have nothing. I ain't had nothing, I ain't had no job, I ain't had nothing. But you got a job. You started yeah. working. I got two of them. That still wasn't what she wanted, though, was it? That ain't what she wanted. She wanted me to go to the club, <clears throat> be in the booth. She wanted the bottles. She wanted to be in the booth. She wanted to be seen. That's wrong with her. But I love, don't love nobody. Yeah. I don't know why that is. Why so many women want that? Somebody, instead of somebody that's gonna be there for them, somebody that's gonna work hard for them. Especially she, she over, you said she like, she almost 30. Right. She ought to be growing out of that. She been growing since she was 18. So I don't see why she ain't grow out. And she's had a baby. Now you gotta give you a moment. <coughs> Our baby every weekend to go to the club, or go out of town, so my son had a, Temperature of 104 degrees. She want to get her mama and my son to watch while she go out of town with some nigga. No. Like, mm -hmm. That don't sound. Mm -hmm. No. That's wrong. That's evil. That's wrong. That just happened in July. That ain't. No, it's, this happened before July. God damn. You had plenty of signs that ain't coming. What was going to happen? But love. It hurt you, huh? I was too fucked up about him. Broke your damn heart, didn't it? I'm still too fucked up about him. I was scared for you, because that's what I was thinking. Let, let, it, let it show you something, Reg. That these girls have done, done you wrong, right? Treated you bad, stepped on your heart, tore your life apart. Don't give a damn about you, right? People still do. The police down there did everything they could. And if you don't think they were scared, they did everything they could not to hurt you. You wanted to get shoot. You said you wanted them to shoot you, right? And they didn't. And that's because people care. They shot him back? No, man. No, don't say that. I'm telling you, things are bad. Okay? Things are bad. But you can make a change. I promise you, when I get down, I say to myself, the sun gonna come up tomorrow. The sun gonna come up tomorrow. No matter how bad it get tonight, the sun gonna come up tomorrow. And that means your whole life gonna come up. You gonna have some real good days coming up. Rich, we talk to people in this room all the time that are in the same circumstances that you are. Okay? We don't see you as a mean person. We don't see you as an evil human being. We realize that everybody has circumstances in their life that brings them to this room. Everybody does. You know, 
and so so easy for people on the outside who don't do this for a living that are sitting in this room right now you know, to say that you must have had evil in your heart. But because we've done this, and we've sat across the table from so many people, we realize that's not the case. It's circumstances. It's all circumstances. It's the stressors that life places on you, the relationships we have with other people, sometimes are bad. It causes things like this to happen. And everybody's got their own story to tell. I told her time after time what she was doing to me. She didn't care. Cause she felt like she couldn't be touched. She's unstoppable. I told her time after time. Who are you talking about, Reg? Terrible. Yeah. Time after time, I told her. But being around niggas, she tried to show up. She called me fuck niggas, deadbeats. I'm a deadbeat. I just got a job. Two, Two jobs. Just say all that just to hurt you. <clears throat> just to be nasty. I know she had a hold of your heart, but she didn't deserve you. And that's the truth. And that's the truth. We want to keep talking to you. Get your water if you need it. Get your Coca Cola if you need it. You need any of that stuff? More water, Coca Cola? Monster Energy Drink. I'm going to have someone get you water. All right. That ain't Reg. Yeah. We got to know what made Reginald. The officer returns with the water as promised and a box of tissues. This foreshadows an emotional topic soon to be discussed. The investigation resumes as detectives continue to build rapport, ensuring Reginald is as vulnerable as possible. This whole thing happened for a reason, as horrible as that is. And as hard as this grasp, it, it all happened for a reason. Now, it's up to you what that reason's going to be. If it's going to be to atone for it and help other people, to bring peace now, to help people for years to come. How many other men go through what you would go through with the women? How many young men got locked up and were thinking about, when I get out, I ain't going to sell no more. I ain't serving nothing else, I'm gonna go straight. And they get back out there. And baby mom's demanding money. She wants to go to the clubs. She wants the car, she wants the shoes, she wants the rent paid for it. So what do they gotta do? They gotta go back to that life. How many young men can you help? If it's one, is that enough? Maybe, if you keep them from going down the same road. But over the rest of your life, how many people can you touch? You hear about it all the time. You hear about it all the time. People that have been charged with all kinds of crimes and they spend the rest of their life trying to make it right and trying to help other people. Now they know in their heart they can't necessarily change what happened, but they can make some good come from it. And being able to make some good come from something that's a powerful thing. You're strong enough. I don't want to see you draw into yourself and just be depressed over this for years and years and years and for it to wear you down <clears throat> so there's nothing left to you. You already depressed. You already low as you can go. It's, 
I want to see you rise up. Only go up. That's it. It can only go up. You still young enough? Can only go up. A subtle but noteworthy moment. Detectives convince Reginald that his crimes can most certainly be atoned for. This is done way before discussing any details of the crime or victim. From Reginald failing to refute these allegations, this insinuates that Reginald knows exactly what detectives are referring to without having to discuss any details of the crime. I'd rather have you looking forward to the opportunity, to the challenge that you're going to face. to bring peace and to help others as opposed to you just becoming depressed and just wearing yourself down so there's nothing left. Because if that happens, if you let that happen to yourself, that means no good at all. It's going to come out of this. Yeah. We, got, we got to do what's right. We got to do what's right by you by the people that are hurting real bad right now. Real bad. It's definitely, definitely the worst day of their life. And so they, so they can crawl up off the floor and start looking up. Like you gonna start looking up. We got to do what's right. We got to know why everything happened the way it did. Do Do what's right for that family, do what's right for you, do what's right for your children. So the years from now, instead of them looking down at you, they're looking up at you. Saying, yeah, this is what he did, but this is what he made of his life afterwards. This is how many people he's helped. This is how strong he was. Be that guy. Be that man. Be that dad. Be willing to fight through this depression. Be willing to make the best of it and to make the most of your life from here on out. You won't tell us what, why this happened. Man. We'll listen to you. We'll work through it. And we're going to take into account everything you say. If you tell us something that we need to go look at and investigate further, we're going to go do it. Now, tonight. Like I said, the truth is always somewhere in the middle. Right now there's people that want peace. And there's things that you need to get off your chest. We will listen to you. If you tell us something needs to be done, do we need to look at something, we will go do it. Because we have to speak for everybody that's involved, you included. We don't make opinions. We work off a of fact. about this, I know it's going to be hard. Okay. You're here, you're in custody, you're under arrest, you know that. Okay. Nobody's going to try to pull the wool over your eyes, nobody's going to try to trick you. Who was in the Nissan Altima that called you today? That I can tell you a little bit about. Um, I'm more than willing to tell you what we know so far, let you fill in the gaps, let us tell us what you were feeling, even tell us what she did, if there's anything that she or anybody else did to cause this. You know, if this was intentional, accidental, like I said, it's, from talking to you, I don't see you as cold-blooded. I know there's just circumstances involved. 
you know, there's just circumstances involved and everything piling on top of you. And everybody on the legal side takes that into account. You know, especially if you're forthcoming, you can bring closure, you can bring peace. And if you can make some good come from, uh, from this, people will notice. They will notice. Now, that investigators feel they have Reginald exactly where they need him in order to secure confession. Detectives revise Reginald on his Fifth Amendment rights, as they plan to not force the confession, but rather allow it to naturally occur, willingly. This will ultimately reveal whether Reginald feels any ounce of remorse or forgiveness. They saw you walk up and stand at a window. What were y'all talking about? to take you home. How'd you get out there? You walked. You walked all the way out to that place on Mayhem? Where'd you walk from? Bust up. Which one? Walmart. Damn, that's a long walk. I know. If somebody drove you, it's okay. They're not in trouble. But you really did walk from the bus stop? Yeah. How long did it take you? You remember? An hour and a half. Yeah. Did you stop at that store or anywhere else along the way? No. Yeah. What were you going there for? Terrible. Just talk to her. Yeah. <coughs> what changed your mind about talking to Terrica when you got there? Terrica window. She just wasn't there the day. How did you find out she wasn't there? In her car window. Yeah. And I seen her in her projects. Down at the bricks? Yeah. Or the same, one of these niggas like me. You saw her down in the projects later on that day? Yeah. Got the lights and you asked her to give you a ride home, what'd she say? Who? Listen. You listen, sorry, I didn't say it wrong. When you asked her a ride, what did she say? He's worked up about Miss Dawkins. It's okay. You keep saying it's okay. This shit ain't okay, man. We know it ain't okay, but it's... We know you were down. We know you was probably pissed off when you get there. Dawkins' car ain't there. Did you want to go home or did you want to go and find her down the bricks? I wanted to find her. Yeah. What happened? First of all, y'all. When I got out, I had two years of probation. Mm hmm And in violation of that probation, I was looking at 15, 20 years. Yeah. You didn't violate them. Did you violate? She told me y'all see y'all was charging me. Are you still on paper? She said, y'all see, y'all was gonna charge me. That's what she told you? Quit. Kidnapping. I'm talking about a child. Talking about from what happened earlier in the week? She called you up and rubbed that in your face? She told me that. 
See, you ain't give a shit no more then. Right. You I ain't give a shit it. no more. You wasn't even thinking no more. I lost it. You should just tell by something. So you thought you was going for 15 years? Behind that? And we'll get to that later on because I sound like I need to know more about that. They said in the parking lot they saw you uh, slide into the driver's seat. Lissa slid across to the passenger seat. And y'all left. She didn't want to leave because she couldn't leave. What did she say? That she couldn't leave. They're tied on there. They got a clock out of their computer and they got a clock out of the door. And I think that's why everybody just hangs out in the parking lot and why they have a food truck that comes there. You see the food truck? Because they don't want to leave them because they got to get back to the call center. They've got exactly 30 minutes. <coughs> How'd you get her to leave? Did you have a weapon or anything? I didn't need no weapon. You just told her that? Did she scoot over? I said, well, I didn't want her at all. All I wanted was a ride home. Why didn't she get out of the car? Why didn't she get out? Mm -hmm. <coughs> I told her not to get out. Hmm? I told her not to get out. Yeah. I didn't want the police called on me. Right in. Cause you had to go find that girl. Yeah. But y'all went when you left. To the brakes. You seen her car there? What was Alyssa doing the whole time? Was she fighting you? No, she wanted to find me. What was she doing? Make it to the bricks. No. But what, what went wrong? She was trying to go back to work. She went way to work. She was going to call y'all. You already thought you was going to do 15 years for the other thing. So what'd you do to her? There's blood on the pillow. So there's blood on the pillow. What pillow? They found blood on the pillow. At my house. So why are you asking me these questions? Because I didn't know. To get your side, man, like we've been telling you. <sighs> that blood on that pillow ain't hers. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm asking. That's why I'm asking. I know you felt like everything was coming down on you. 
and you couldn't let her leave. Nice. But, and I know you said she was scared when y'all left for work. This is thing. Mm -hmm. This is the thing. Yeah. I go to see my son. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Terrible had me hard getting away. Yeah. And I said, what happened to her with him? Yeah. When I come out, I walk up. She got a knife. But she tell people I had a knife. You come out at the daycare? At the daycare. <coughs> she had a knife for me not being scared of her. I tried to take from her. She grabbed a knife mm -hmm. with the top on. She already got it at the bottom of her hand and grabbed up the top to keep me from it. That's how it bent. Mm -hmm. And she cut herself. And you're right, it did bend. Right. I don't know. Mm -hmm. What kind of knife was it? It was a kitchen knife. Okay. But the knife bent. And she cut herself. So. to keep me out of that shit. I tell her to tell them folks what happened. Like, you know what I'm saying? Cause I tried to take her to the hospital. Mm -hmm. I told her I'd go to the hospital with her. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I if you. I was to go to jail, I'd just go to jail behind my son hitting his head while we wrestling. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Okay. She tell me I pushed him. Like, I, I, I pushed him and we, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to get an eye from you. But anyway, she tell me she gonna do that or whatever. But she say she ain't wanna go to the hospital because she ain't wanna talk to y'all. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, you know, she told me just call her. I told her, no man, we just gonna go to the hospital. You know what I'm saying? She's there saying she ain't going to the hospital, so she left. When she left, I guess that next morning, she came when they talked to y'all. Not, not yet, sir. Yeah. And then I asked her what, what was said. And she said they had everything on camera with me at the door and all that, of her car and all that. So I'm like, they ain't got no cameras at the daycare. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I said, I don't even know that's no, true. Yeah, I'm like, they ain't even got no cameras at Daco. Yeah. What she said, the woman said they had cameras. But really, what it was, was <coughs> she basically was going to press charges on me. That's what she was saying to me, but telling the lies and saying, because y'all said she pressed charges on me. Mm -hmm. she, she told me that the woman said she called the police, mm -hmm. which she probably did about the night being out there. Say they yeah. find me, right? I think she yeah. did, yeah. She might have. I don't know. Okay. But, um, when she went up there and said that I had the knife, I lost it. Like, what day why? did she tell, call, tell you that? What, did, what day it happened at the daycare? Monday? Tuesday? I, I ain't Monday. You think? What day she called? I think she went and talked to them Tuesday morning. That's. I got my days mixed up. That's right. About right. Monday and then Tuesday. Yeah. Well, that, <coughs> well, yeah. Well, anyway, I called her, you know, asked her what's going on. So she told me that. She told me that. They was talking to her about the charges and stuff, and said if she didn't want to press charges, that the state would pick it up. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, what you told them? And she said, I told them what happened, but what did you tell them? She told them to say, I told them you had. I said, why did you tell them I had a knife? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's how much she don't care. You know what I'm saying? And knowing I'm on probation if I get violated. That's behind something like that. My charge carried 65 years all together, the charges I had. Sometimes they hold kids over your head, sometimes they hold that paper over your head, you know? 
She knew that. And still did it. But, and yeah, she still did it. She felt like I heard her. Knowing even all the shit I talked to her, yeah. I would have never heard her. Yeah. Never put hands on her before or nothing? No. I don't believe you. So, that and we know that I had to eat you up. You already said that you was just out of your mind about it. No, the day she snatched that knife, yeah. when she was, when she had, the day she had that knife, I did put my hands on her that day. Because she pulled the knife. Yeah, I was mad. Like, you snatched, <coughs> you first you got a knife, and then you snatched the knife. And your son's there. And, yeah, my son there, and you don't cut, now you don't cut your finger deep, and you got to go to the hospital, like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, but, you, but you say you put your hands on you pushed her away, or you punched her, you No, I, I slapped her. You slapped her. But yeah, did she in quit? circumstances, that's understandable. Yeah. Did she quit fighting after that? Oh, I ain't stop over though. Oh, it was later on? Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I, when I we there, I just slid her over to the next seat. Yeah. And then yet again, she had like, she don't care about nothing going on. And I lost it. So I told her she was going to get me out this time. Behind son, she calls. Then I, I was gonna hurt her too. Yeah. Well, this is ain't the one you was after. Hell no. How does she want to get hurt then? Answer me this, because somebody's gonna ask the question, and I'm gonna have to tell. When y'all went back to house on 10th Ave. Was the sex consensual? No. She wanted to have sex? Me and her, like, it, it wasn't against her will? No. Okay. Y'all have had sex before, right? Right. Okay. But the thing is, she, like, after we, after we <clears throat> had sex, she was saying she had to get back to her job. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, I mean, that would be like you having to get back to your job, too. Right. She don't want to get fired because they are tight on the right. But I know you said you didn't want to leave because you were about to call the police. Right. And you still had to find Miss Dawkins. How did you, you stop her from leaving? Y'all got him? Hmm? That's one of the things we need to ask you about. The family's gonna need closure on that, buddy. What's one of the things? Can you tell me where Miss Thompson is? Listen. We can come back to the other, but. Can you tell me where you put it? Right now, all you said is that, you know, you were raging, which I know you were, because you told us everything about how this girl's been acting. And that you needed Miss Thompson to take you there. You got back to your house with Miss Thompson, you all had sex, but you said that Miss Thompson did not make it to the jury. But she still had her car. So, I mean, based on what you're saying, I mean, that's leading us to believe that she never made it out of your house. Because you said you couldn't let her leave. You were scared to let her leave because you had to find Miss Dawkins. Miss Thompson might call the police. Or you could do that. We got, I mean, we got that in the house. We had six.
Yeah. Then what? How did she die? They don't know. They don't know. You don't know? Explain. You said she never made it to the bricks. So she died before you went down there. I didn't say that. When did she die? When did she die? Yeah. When she died? <coughs> you said she didn't make it to the bricks. You said you couldn't let her leave. You told us all this of what led to this. Mm -hmm. And I know it hurts. You said what? You told us that you couldn't let her leave. I said I couldn't let her leave? You said you didn't want her to leave, you couldn't let her leave, that she called the police. <sighs> you told us that she never made it down to the bricks, but you were down there in her car. You dished her cell phone over on Nina Hills. What you got against, I think it's your cousin or whoever it is that lives there. I don't know why you dish it there. I have no idea. I don't got nothing against them boys, and I really want them to know that. I ain't throwing no down phone by doing the setting them up. I'll tell them. The I'll tell them, because that's, that's probably what they're thinking. Well, yeah, that's, that's what, what they're, they're thinking. thinking. I seen them on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah, they thought you were setting them up. No. But I'll tell them. What'd you throw it back there for? It'd be better if you told them, but I'll tell them. Hmm? I said, what'd you throw it back there for then, instead of somewhere else? You know what I mean? No. It, I actually do, did throw it somewhere else, but the motherfucker didn't fly. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So hmm. when I stopped at a destination, <clears throat> I just tossed the motherfucker. Yeah. I went over there, letting them know that. I went over there to get a gun. That's Mr. What Dawkins. Did. That's what I came to the crib for. Did you find one when you went in? Hell no. If I would've found one, I'd be dead right now. I wish I would've found one. And she died when she was with you. I'm trying to figure out how and why what you were going through in that rage that you had for your baby's mom got taken out on Alyssa Thompson. can't hold that in forever. You're not hard enough because I don't care if you were out in the streets before. You're a decent human being. You are. Just everything got the best of you. Even if it was just for a split second, it got the best of you. I'm telling you, it sucks. This is where we're at. We can't change it. But where you go from here is completely, completely up to you. You can live forever in the depths of despair. You can let this make you hard and pretend like you don't care that somebody's life was taken. Or you can admit to yourself and to that family what you did 
and you can promise that you are going to live each day as a better man and that you're going to help others along the way. Exactly what happened? Was this an accident? Was it pre planned, premeditated? We're trying to give you the benefit of the doubt on that one, based on everything you told us about relationships in the past and stuff you're going through. But part of trying to make that determination is trying to figure out exactly what happened in the incident. Whether it's something you thought about doing and did or whether it was something spontaneous that happened. Whether it was an accident, whether it was a fight you had hand. But you're not helping us out with that at all. You're not helping yourself, you're not helping the family. What happened after you had sex, Reginald? you that cigarette before you do. No, you don't. You just say they smoke free from sitting in there. In here, smoke free. All right. So we ain't gonna give you no cigarette. We got a spot we out. We got, we, got a, we, got a, we got a spot outside that's not smoke free. You ain't gonna take me out there. You don't think so? <laughs> I can assure you that we will. I can also assure you I got a box of new ports on my desk. Yeah, you brought my got my boss and we pulled out my pocket. Nope, not yours. They definitely got the new pulls out my pocket. Well, he got his own pack too. Give me a cigarette first, then. Okay, then. You you'll tell That's us what I'll happened go. after you had sex. After we give you a cigarette. Yup. He's gonna let me get up and walk all the way down there. Right? Yeah. Investigators agree on giving Reginald a quick cigarette break in exchange for the confession. Though, in this particular circumstance, a confession isn't completely necessary in securing a conviction, detectives proceed to seek further information in order to verify or obtain any details they may have left out. You got a lot in your pocket. I told you that. Oh, come on. But you can't. Oh, yeah. Come on. Let's take a seat. You want to put the rest of my money with my own? Oh, your money was in your pocket? Yeah. No, that's the rest of it. Oh, there's more of it. I just got paid. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> okay. My bad, right? 
I told you I picked it up, but then got called away. How much money was it? Oh, that's $25 cents. That's five hundred. I'm gonna put it in your bag right here. Yeah, look and see what the rest of it, you know. Cause it's like yeah, there's one eighty. Should be like one eighty or some shit. Yeah, there's money in there. I ain't gonna count it right now. You ain't gonna count it. Someone will count it. I ain't gonna reach all up in the bag. Coke Zero that you don't like. New house when you got that, not me. But you're not exactly making yourself look remorseful. You know what I mean? So, in a way, I mean, it really is for you, too. So, and if you can't believe all that, then just believe that we did make a deal, and no matter how shitty the cigarettes were, a deal's a deal. Oh man, this is crazy. I know.
Okay. The Reg, are you saying that you want a lawyer before you talk to us anymore? Reginald is now forced to change into a suit. His clothes, saliva, and other bodily fluids are collected for further analysis by forensics. Though investigators failed to obtain a confession, detectives did manage to determine whether or not Reginald felt truly remorseful. Reginald was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. He also faces seven other charges, some including armed burglary, grand theft, possession of a weapon by a convicted felon, and resisting arrest. Special thanks to my channel members.